Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at the Forge World Dogmas for the Adeptus Mechanicus within Kill Team Elites. Before we begin, if you'd like to see more videos along these lines, please hit the subscribe button and destroy the bell button so that you never miss an upload. <clears throat> cool. Um, so, slight confession here, I've just been talking for a good 10-15 minutes without recording like a complete moron. Um, so, I have read through some of these, and I'll probably forget all of the rules, but I'll read through them anyway. Um, <clears throat> I will take a little slight detour of what I did last time, however, learning from my mistakes, possibly. Uh, so, it says, the sub-factions uh, for Adeptus Mechanicus faction keyword are called forge worlds their sub faction abilities are called forge world dogmas if your kill team is battle forge and all models in your kill team are drawn from the same forge world models in the kill team get into the forge world dogma described below and they can use that forge world's tactics um so basically these guys do not have a negative um like a crute chaos cultist grots and etc etc which do not disallow you from having your own um dogmas basically um yeah so there's, there's no negatives to taking a forge world as long as they're all from the same one that is the bottom line so in a previous video i did go around and read the canticles um, i don't know if i'll be doing that unless i want to go back and do that later on but we'll read their rules so mars glory to the omnisire the cult mechanicus in all the cult mechanicus, there are no forge worlds more holy or more blessed than Mars. The favour of their machine god can be seen in the powerful optimization granted by every static ridden psalm incanted by his most faithful followers. Each time you randomly determine, these are the rules by the way, uh, which canticle of the Omnissiah, see the kill team core manual, is being canted. Roll two dice instead of one. Models in your kill team receive the benefit of both results instead of just the results of the first dice. If a duplicate is rolled, no additional canticle is canted this turn. So, um, I suppose what you could do, so the one thing I didn't see before, right, okay, so the canticles, the way they work, you roll a d6, or you pick one. If you pick one, um, then you don't get to receive that benefit ever again for the rest of the game. Um, but with this one, if you roll, you roll 2d6. Obviously, if you roll a duplicate, um, you're not going to get the benefit. So what you could do, and this is what I didn't see before, is you could pick, for the first two rounds, you could pick two that you don't like as much, right? Um, not necessarily the best way around it, but then every other one you've got, will be, you'll only have out of four, won't you? So if you roll in two dice, you're going to get a 50-50 shot of getting the one that you want, plus another good one, okay? So it's one way to do it. Not necessarily the best way, but this is a good one, and all the canticles are good. Every single one of them is good. Um, it's just which one you'd want to use. Anyway, let's move on. That was a lot faster than the last time, to be honest, because it was going on a bit before. So, let's go to the Grier. Or Grey? Grey? Grey. Grier. Grier. I'm going for Grier. Steely minded tenacity and the refusal to retreat are more than just characterist traits uh, to those who serve Grier. Indeed, such qualities are hard wired oh, good gosh hard wired into all who bear the Forge World symbols. Um, so the rules state roll a dice each time a model in your kill team is reduced to zero wounds. On a on a six, they are restored to one wound remaining. In addition, models in your kill team pass a nerve test on an unmodified roll of 6, as well as a unmodified roll of 1, which is what you would already get, So, but you'd also get the 6. However, models in your kill team cannot retreat or fall back unless they are, have a commander on the kill team on the battlefield. So, if you're playing command, if you bring in a commander, these guys are actually really, 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 really good, to be honest. Um, there is some negatives to bring them, if you don't, but... So basically what you're getting is a six up feeling of pain. However, this is worded specifically to say um, that when they're reduced to zero wounds on a six, they're restored to one wound remaining. In addition, yeah, basically it doesn't say um, it doesn't say it doesn't work on mortal wounds. So it'll still work on a mortal wound uh, because they've been reduced to zero wounds with a mortal wound. Then on a six, they come back and nothing happens. Um, so it's like a, a last line of defense and an extra layer of defense, which is always good. 
because the guys have got to get through the hit roll, the wound roll, you've got your armor save, and then you've got that save, so it's an extra layer, increasing your chances. Even though it's a six, it's still quite a good chance that you could get it uh, if you factor in all the others. It lowers their chance of actually killing you. Um, the nerve test thing is good, basically meaning you've got a one in three chance on a D6 roll to pass a nerve test um, automatically if you wasn't already going to pass. Um, I don't like the fact that you can't retreat or fall back because I've done that a couple of times with my guardsmen. Um, but hopefully if you're playing right and you've got your combat guys at the front and your other guys at the back, everything should be fine anyway. Um, <clears throat> Let's move on to Metallica, the band we all know. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa. this is not the band, is it? Metallica, Relentless March. The Forge World of Metallica seek nothing less than to completely obliterate their foes and reorder the galaxy according to their own dictates. They will let nothing swear their appointed task. Modders in your kill team can shoot rapid fire weapons as if they were assault weapons, uh, if they advanced. E.g. Rapid Fire 1 would count as an Assault 1 weapon. <clears throat> In addition, models do not suffer the penalty to the hit rolls for shooting Assault weapons during the battle round in which they advance. So, <clears throat> the Necrons have something similar, um, <clears throat> meaning that they can um, advance um, and shoot Rapid Fire weapons as Assault weapon weapons. However, the Necrons do have a minus one. I think there's other kill teams that don't have a minus one. But obviously these guys are Imperials. So they're going to have a <clears throat> no negatives to doing that. Um, obviously the way you play these guys would be. If you are doing that. You'd want to be moving around a lot. Uh, but you're not going to get your rapid fire ability. Meaning you're not going to fire twice instead of once. But you can uh, you can work with that. It's not bad. It's not bad. So speedy. Unless there's other rules that say otherwise. They didn't get all the way through this. Um, we'll find out. And then these are your fast guys, your Metallicas. Um, yes, uh, for whom the bell tolls. Anyway, Lucius, uh, the Solar Blessing. Lucius is renowned for how, for its craftsmanship and unique Solar Blessed... Blessedors? Blessedores? <clears throat> solar Blessedores. They are those clad in such radiant consider themselves armoured by the faith of the in their um, Omnissiah. Good gosh, I can't speak today. <clears throat> when making saving throws for models in your kill team, treat enemy attacks with an armor penetration of minus one as having a minus as a zero instead. So this is good. Uh, I believe most flare gauze weapons have minus one, but it, there is a uh, rock paper scissors to beat that. Um, I can't remember which one it was now. I've only just done the video to be honest, so I should know it. Um, in fact, let's go and look because I think it's quite close to here, isn't it? That's Legion Traits. Sorry, I'm just going through them. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. Um, it is the Mephrit. Um, they have, uh, they become minus one. They get an additional minus one. So they would be the ones that would beat them. Uh, where are we? Do Forge Wild Dogmas. There we go. Um, yeah, so it, it's good, but it's it's kind of too passive for my opinion. Uh, for my In my opinion. Not for my opinion. Because my opinion, I will just state it anyway, whether it's... Uh, whether it's a good one or not. Um, Agrippina. Um, staunch defenders. Battle hardened by constant clashes with the horrors that issue out of the eye of terror. Those that forge world Agrippina have learned the lessons of defensive warfare well. When a model in your kill team fires Overwatch, they successfully hit on a 5 or a 6. So there's no... Right. <clears throat> there's a couple of uh, traits... Dogmas, etc., um, that have a very similar one to this one. This is possibly the best one out of those, in that there's no negatives um, of being next to within six inches base to base contacts like the Mardians. Um, it's possibly not the best one, but it is uh, playing as day. It's literally just that a five or a six with without exception. So that's good. Um, I don't think it's the best one in the in this whole this whole rigmarole of the dogmas but i am um, i do think it's a a good straightforward one basically so, yeah basically there's no negatives um so we are coming close to the end <clears throat> let me see if we can get this number right so a v with three ones after it is eight i believe so stage is eight um shroud protocols oh wait a minute 
X is 10. Yeah, so V is, v is 5. Yeah, yeah. So, when the armies of the Star G is 8 march to war, they do so beneath stealth screen projectors. Um, projectors and target befouling apparatus. 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 The tech priests of the Forge World deny owning such technology and only reinforces their untrustworthy reputation. Hmm. Right. Very, very, um, very confusing. The fluff is quite leading there. Um, we'll go on to that in a second. But the rules say models in your kill team are considered to be obscured to model enemy models that target them if they are more than 12 inches away from the model. So there's a lot of very similar ones that are going around. So what we'll do is I think the Tau one is if you don't move, you are obscured. Um, Orcs is over 18 inches away and with these guys it's over 12 inches away so you can move out of the way and still be obscured and stand in the middle of the board um, pretty much. Um, it weighs around it but um, it's kind of fun. <clears throat> um, yeah so I personally when I say it, when it says they can't be trusted it feels like they're possibly the dark angels of the thingy in that there secretly chaos. Right, I needed that to uh, to wind Dark Angels players up. So if James is listening, uh, which I don't think he is, um, you can put something in the comments down below and say like, hey, behave or something like that. Right, cool. Um, yes. So we'll move on to the last one, which is Riza. Riza? As in like uh, Wu-Tang Clan Riza? I'll say Riza. Um, <laughs> uh, red in Cog and Claw. Hmm, Claw. Tech Priest of Riza points at two... Aggressive combat, point to aggressive combat, doctrines and zealous training, protocols to explain the exceptional hand-to-hand -hand prowess of their troops. Skeptics, however, counter that such designs do not explain why Rizar troops seem to revel in close combat, close quarters violence. You can re-roll wound rolls of one in the fight phase for attacks made by models in your kill team. Um, that's good. It would be better if they'd have just plussed once a strength, much like the Catachans and the Blood Angels and all the rest of it. Um, but it just says in the fight phase, so you don't have to have charged. So again, it's a good one for if someone's coming at you. Um, you can use that as, uh, again, if you're countering a, a combat army, these guys are kind of good. So yes, the, uh, every, every kill team needs to have a combat um, dogma or such like. Personally, I think the Lucius one is a bit pants. Um... Agrippina's okay. I think the Stygies 8 um, Shroud Protocols is possibly the best one, being 12 inches or more away. Um, there's no rerolls of 1. No, there isn't. No rerolls of 1 to hit that I've found. Um, personally, I think Mars is good because you just get two lots of canticles, which are always good. Remembering them is possibly a different thing, but if you play them often, you probably won't have a problem. Um, other than that... <laughs> Um, yeah, so my favourite, my favourite is the Stages 8, uh, followed by Mars. Mars is an overall good one, it's an everyman team. Um, Stages 8 is good for sitting back and shooting, clearly. Um, the other one, a defensive combat, um, would be Rizar or Riza, Rizar. Yep, um, I don't think the Lucius one is any good. Metallica's okay if you want to move about. Basically, that's my call on it. So my favourite would be the uh, uh, Stages A or the Mars. Yes, cool. So, how long have we gone on this video? 13 minutes. So, quite a while. Um, I'm going to call it there, guys. If you'd like to see more videos like this line, um, please hit the subscribe button. And obviously put comments down below. Um, I might have made a mistake. You might know something that I don't and let people know. And hopefully if it's a good comment, I might pin it to the top. Um, yes, so we'll call it a day and I will say goodbye to you. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.